Hey everyone, it's Monday and I'm Anna Gibbs. So this is your weekly dose of Monday Morning Mojo. Good morning, good morning. Hi everyone and welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo. It's so good to be with you guys this morning. I am back from a wonderful vacation. I was in Aruba for the last week. And um, if you have not been on a vacation in a little while, I highly encourage you to figure out a way to get away for a day or a couple of days a week, whatever you can do, and um, and find the time to reconnect with yourself and, and reset. Um, that's what I love about vacation. It was an opportunity for me to just kind of dial it down a little bit, really relax. Of course, I love the beach, so that does a lot for my spirit. Um, and you know, I always learn something new about myself every time I go away. So um, I feel good to be back with all of you this week. And I'm excited to talk to you because, guys, this is the middle of June, which means that we are right about at the midway point for 2023. I, I know it seems unbelievable, but the year is nearly half through. And so I wanted to talk to you this morning about your goals and how you're doing, um, because at this point in, in the year, this is a perfect time for us to really reevaluate what it is we're setting out to accomplish this year. And I know that um, if you're a part of this community, you are focused on achieving your goals. Um, and I wanted to check in with you and, and help you figure out how you're doing, right? And we're gonna check in on progress. So the thing about this uh, is, are we doing this on the regular? Are you checking in with your goals enough throughout the, the weeks and months? Uh, are you looking at strategy and looking at how you are creating activities that get you closer to the goal? You know, to be on track feels great and to be off track is normal. <laughs> I just want you guys to understand you know, that there, look, I believe that any of us who set goals, we do so with a lot of excitement. We do so with great intention. I believe that anyone who sets a goal is at the moment that they're setting that goal, feeling really excited about it. And, and no one sets a goal uh, without wanting to hit the goal, right? That, that's a given. Yet, I think we can all find ourselves off track at times. And so, while I want to normalize that a little bit, I also want to say that that just becomes a call to action, right? Do you agree? So it's a call to action for us to now look at, okay, why are we off track? How do we get back on track? And how do we create progress back towards our goals? And so um, in, in this morning's um, Monday Morning Mojo session, I'm going to ask some questions that you might want to jot down and uh, for you to have you know, some time to reflect on this. So the first question I wanna ask you is, are you clear about the goals you've set? Are you clear about the goals you've set for your career, your, your business, for your personal life, for your health, your wealth, your finances? Do you have written goals for each of those areas? So number one, if you don't, this would be the best time for you to, to create those goals and write them down. The second thing I wanna ask you is about the goal itself. Why did you set the goal? Why is this goal important to you? So first you're gonna get clear about your goals and write them down. People who have goals written down are 87% more likely to hit the goal than someone who doesn't have it written down. So if you say, okay, well, I know what I want to accomplish. Um, I have it all up here. That's not enough. We want to get it in writing. Okay. And then the next thing I want you to look at is why is the goal important to you? Why is this goal important to you? And why is this going to matter? How will, how will accomplishing this goal change you? How will it change your, yourself personally? How will it change your business? How will it affect your opportunities? How will it affect your career, right? So why is this goal important to you? And when you set the goal, what was going on in your life at the time? 
Did you set the goal because it was a logical process? Were you feeling emotional at the time? You know, like a lot of times we set goals um, out of some sort of emotion. We're either um, excited or maybe we're even frustrated. Uh, for example, you know, maybe you're just tired of, of um, not feeling well or feeling healthy or wanting to release weight. So through that kind of feeling or frustration, you set this goal that this is going to be the year for you to get healthy, release the weight and, and accomplish those things personally. Um, maybe you were feeling frustrated or tired about your financial situation or about where your business is or feeling excited about setting a bigger goal so you can break through to another level of production or recognition that you you know were looking to earn from your company or your industry right so i think it's important for us to recognize what are the emotional factors at play when we set goals right because again we we set the goal with an intention to fulfill it and so we we know that there's emotion behind it and so i think when we're able to connect to that emotion um, we can pull it apart a little bit more and we can understand then how we create what's known as a big why, right? Your motivation, your big why, your purpose for achieving the goal, your purpose for achieving the goal. Because I think that there is a lot of focus around the goal setting and the end result, but we need to really take a look at what is happening in our hearts and in our minds as we set the goal, and more importantly, what will happen when we achieve the goal, right? So that emotional component is huge. So that's an important question. Now, as we are looking at our goals and we are getting clear about why we set them and, and why they're important to us, now I want us to take a look at, okay, where are we at this mid-year point? And are we on track? And what does it mean to be on track? So this is gonna be different for every one of you and it's gonna be different based on the goals. You know, some businesses like real estate are very um, seasonal and secular. And so not everything is easily divided by 12. So we can't always say if your goal is to make $100,000 a year that by the middle of June, you should have already earned $50,000. It may, it may be that a bulk of your income is achieved in a certain part of the year. So I think it's important for us to acknowledge what is what are some of the unique factors of our own industries, of our own businesses, of our own you know, process, right? But where would you have expected to be at this point when you set out the goal? And, and, you know, that's another interesting part of the conversation, too, because I think part of our goal setting has to be, you know, based in some reality. And so I've talked about this before on, on Mojo. When we set goals, we want to use an acronym, uh, and the acronym is SMART. So if you're writing this down, write the word SMART uh, going down your page, S-M-A-R-T, and I'll give you the acronym for this. So when you set goals, you wanna set SMART goals. And the first one, the S is for specific. So like I said to you a few minutes ago, what is your goal and how specific can it be, right? Can we, can we get it down in writing in a very specific format? So a specific goal is not to say, I want to lose weight. A specific goal would be, I want to lose 20 pounds by June 1st. That would be a very specific goal, okay? Because the second part of the acronym for the M is measurable. So that is just how much by when. So we set goalposts along the way. And this is really important, especially when your goals are big um, or they will take a whole year to accomplish. We wanna break it down into smaller wins and therefore I call them goalposts. So you want to say, okay, you know, uh, I'll, I'll break this goal down and, and each month I wanna accomplish X. And so it's how much by when. So your goal is very specific and it's very measurable. The A in the SMART acronym is attainable. And so that means that whatever you've set out to do is within reach, it's attainable. So in other words, if I say I wanna lose 20 pounds in two weeks, um, you know, that may not be so attainable. 
right? So we want the goal to be something that we can feel good about achieving. We don't want to, you know, and this is another part of the psychology of goal setting. Because again, when we set goals, we're in this emotional state. And sometimes our, our emotions are uh, leading us into a lot of excitement and sometimes even maybe a little overconfidence about what we can accomplish, right? I mean, I can't be the only one who's ever put herself there, right? Where I say, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it quickly. And so we want to be um, able to look at the goal with a realistic approach and make sure that the goal is attainable. And, and that is the next part now, the R is realistic. So is it attainable? Is it within my reach? And is it realistic? And then lastly, timely. Now, when you look at your goals and, and you consider, is it timely? Um, it, it takes into a few things into account. Number one is, is this goal important for you to achieve right now? And, and when do you need to get there? And why is that important to you, your, your life, your progress, your business? Like, what do you stand to accomplish through achievement of the goal, right? So that is another important factor in goal setting. So that is the SMART acronym. So it helps you keep your goals and parameters. Now, we were talking a minute ago about your big why. So your big why is your motivating factor. So let's revisit right now at this mid-year point, why setting this goal mattered to you. So take a moment and think about that right now. Why was this goal important to you? Again, what do you stand to accomplish? Who do you become in achieving the goal? Because that's another really important factor of goal setting. Sometimes it's, it's even more important than the goal itself is who you become in the process. And who you need to become in, in the process of achieving the goal. In other words, are there skills that you need to learn and develop? Are there um, tools that you need to incorporate? Uh, are there things about yourself that you need to overcome, achieve in order to hit the goal? So it is also about the personal journey in accomplishing the goal, right? What do you need to to gather in terms of resources, support, knowledge, skill, and tools in order for you to be successful in achieving the goal. So as you are taking all those things into account and you're thinking about what you set out to accomplish in different areas of your life back on January 1st when you were super excited about the new year, feeling really motivated and probably quite empowered, um, I want you now to take a look at where you are. And if where you are at this moment is not quite on track, the first thing I want you to say to yourself is it's okay. It's okay because being on track for your goal is great and being somewhat off track for your goal is just an opportunity. Being off track for your goal is just an opportunity. Why? Because you're gonna figure it out. You're gonna learn something about yourself and the goal itself. Now. When you realize that there is a gap between where you wanted to be and where you are, the, the next thing that we're going to do is figure out how to bridge the gap. Now, for some of you, you might need a little help with this. You might need to talk to someone like a coach or a consultant. You might need to look at who's on your team at work, who is a good peer that could uh, coach you through or mentor you. Uh, is it in, in a conversation to have with your, uh, your leadership team, your, your supervisor, who can help you and, you know, really analyze how to bridge the gap? Because there will be a, a number of activities that you will come up with that are going to help you create that bridge. Now, here's the thing, guys, progress, which you have to understand is progress is never linear. Progress is never a straight line, right? It's always got some kind of curvature to it. And I think that often when we set a goal and we think about the progress towards the goal, I would think of it more as a hockey stick, right? So if you picture a hockey stick right now, the bottom of the stick, right, uh, is, is sort of flat. And so that's what happens as you start to approach, you know, the activities towards your goal the activities and the results are sort of linear and sort of flat. And then you see that at some point there is something that starts to change and you come up on that curve and accelerate to the goal. So it's never a straight line, it's never linear, it's never just gonna be right up there and, and we're hitting success. 
it is flat for a little while. So are you just at that flat point and perhaps you're just one choice away from turning the corner and starting to see things accelerate? And that's an important message that I wanted to, to leave with you too this morning about possibly being just one choice away. Because I think that we've all gone through reflection around our goals and, and, and considered changing the goals even. And I, as your coach, am not going to encourage you to change the goal until we have exhausted all of our opportunities. So in other words, just because you're not on track doesn't mean the goal wasn't smart to begin with, doesn't mean that you shouldn't still try to accomplish the goal. It just might mean that right now at this point in the year, what can you do differently that will bring different results, right? Because we all know if we do the same thing, we can expect the same results. So is this just an opportunity for you to look at something different and for you to then apply something that is more strategic in your action plan that will start to bring different results, right? So if you could change one thing, if you could change one thing about what you're doing currently in the pursuit of your goal, what would it be? Sometimes the slightest change makes the biggest difference, right? You know, water will boil at 212 degrees, but it will not boil at 211 degrees. So one degree makes all the difference. So I want you to ask yourself, what is the one thing I could do differently right now that would really start to change the trajectory of, of my progress? And, you know, let's talk about progress for a minute. Um, I said that progress is never linear, and that is true. The other thing that I want you to understand about progress is, is that there's a couple of things that have to come before you actually see progress. Uh, and they all start with the letter P. So I'll give you the three Ps. The first one is purpose. Purpose. A clear purpose is really crucial in achieving your goals, right? We talked about, you know, the reasons why this goal is so important to you and what is the purpose of the goal. So get clear about your purpose because your purpose will drive priority. I find that most people who flounder, who are not clear on what activities they need to be focused on, it's usually a reflection of not really being super clear about the goal itself and not having a defined purpose around the goal. So once you define your purpose, you can establish your priorities. You start to become clearer about the things that, that you should be engaging in versus the activities you should not be engaging in. Your, your priorities start to become clear and you know what you should say yes to and what you should say no to. Because every choice that you make is either gonna get you closer to your goal or bring you further apart from the goal and widen that gap. So first we need to know what our purpose is, then our purpose drives our priority, and then our priorities, when we get clear about our priorities and stay committed to our priorities, we are in production, we are, we are productive, and it's productivity that gets results. It's productivity that gets results. So my friends, don't confuse any kind of movement for productivity. I think that that's another thing after so many years of coaching entrepreneurs and working in this industry for the last 11 years, I find that when most people are off track with their goals um, and we talk about productivity, some people are just confused about why they're not getting results because they feel so busy all the time. Well, my loves, busyness does not equal productivity. So you can be busy and you can be moving all day long Yet, are you focused on the activities that will bring you results? It's only then that you're truly productive. So for, for instance, you know, if you're in any kind of sales-driven business um, and you have to generate your own business, right? If you're not focused on enough lead generation activities, you're not going to have enough leads or customers to work with. So your lead generation and the time you put on that, that's a priority, that's what we refer to, uh, which you've heard me talk about here before, the 80-20 principle. That's another really important factor in goal achievement is knowing that your time and the activities in which you spend your time are not created equal. 
They are not created equal. There is a short list of activities that when you focus on those things first, priority, they will yield more of the results that you're looking for, right? So the 80-20 principle says there's this imbalance to, to your time and your activities. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you focus on the short list of 20% activities, that should bring you 80% of the results that you seek. So in my example, lead generation would be a 20% activity. So the 80-20 rule could be another thing at play that is really determining whether or not you're on track. So as you start to evaluate where you are mid-year, let's take a look at how do we assess priority and how do we stay committed to those priorities where they come first and we focus on that shorter list of activities, probably just one or two things that if you did every day faithfully, it would get you to your goal, right? So if the goal is weight loss, if you were to exercise and move your body every day and really stick to the right food plan, whether it's counting calories or uh, you know other, other types of factors that might be keto or, or paleo, whatever it is on your plan, if you are uh, focused on just those two things every day, you would be on track with your goal, right? Hydration, whatever it is. So same thing with your business. What are the two or three things that if you were to make that a priority every single day would start to produce res results that gets you closer to your goal? That's when you know you're, you're truly being productive. Um, so again, you know, we're talking about where are we in the middle of the year in comparison to our goals? Have you looked at them? Do you visit? I'm asking you a lot of questions today. This is all about questions for you to do some self-reflection. And if I can assist you more with it, that, you know, please reach out. Uh, but I'm giving you the tools right now so that you can do your own assessing of where you are in the process of hitting your goals right now at the middle of the year. And so when you take a look at your goals and, and who you were when you set the goals, are you still in that same mindset? Are you still feeling just as empowered and motivated as you did on January 1st when you set the goal? And if not, what is happening? What is the story that you might be telling yourself? Because our belief system around our goals is paramount. Whatever we believe to be true will be true for ourselves. And so if we believe that we have the ability to hit this goal, we're going to look for opportunities to make that true. And if we believe that there is something about us that says we can't hit the goal, then we're going to find ways to prove that to be true as well. So your belief around your goal and your ability to hit the goal is everything. And that's another, you know, um, thing that a coach or a mentor or an accountability partner can help you with because accountability around the goal is the secret sauce and and having accountability around the goal does several things for you or having an accountability partner with around the goal uh, because I think another myth around goal setting and accomplishment is that we have the ability to hold ourselves accountable uh, and I'm here to tell you that the most disciplined and the most successful people will tell you that they have accountability partners because it's hard to hold ourselves accountable every day, all day long. We will find ways to rationalize. We will find ways to compromise. We will find conditions around why we're doing what we're doing or, or for the reasons why we're on track or not on track. So having an accountability partner is something that provides perspective because that partner is not emotionally attached to your goal. That partner is not financially invested in your goal. They are outside of the goal. They're outside of the process. They can see things that you can't see about your actions, about your strategy, about your approach. Uh, they may be able to even support and empower you and encourage you. So having an accountability partner is, is really a key factor and something that you might have to, to take a look at at this point in the middle of the year. Again, rather than scrapping the goal, let's figure out different ways to get on track and different ways to accomplish the goal. And having that accountability partner could be one of the first things that you want to do. Um, because when you let others in on what you're doing, they can become a cheerleader for you. 
They can uh, encourage you, they can support you. And if you choose an accountability partner that has some experience, that has some uh, success or, or a powerful track record themselves, they may be able to even teach you or provide you with resources um, more than just you know, the, the encouragement that you seek. They might be able to actually give you tools that will help you do what you're doing smarter and faster. And so having the accountability partner is huge because listen, you know, again, when we set the goal, we have the best intentions, but then life happens. And in life, we find a lot of things. It could be, um, a, you know, sometimes it's an interruption or distraction. And other times it's just significant events that we couldn't have foreseen like COVID and we have to figure it out. So having an accountability partner can also mean that you have a strategy partner. So that could be something that you need to look at now at the midpoint of the year and find those people who can support you. So I know I gave you a lot of information this morning and threw a lot of questions at you, but I wanted to just raise some awareness to the fact that every one of us has goals, whether we are clearly articulating them to other people or not. I know that you set out this year with intentions around making this a different year. What are those intentions? What is it that you want to see change in your business, in your life, in your health, in your wealth, in your relationships? Right now, I want you to write down some goals around each of those key areas of your life and apply that SMART acronym. Make sure it's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Take a look at what you need to do, right? Look at why the goal is important to you why the goal is, why the goal matters, what you will stand to accomplish personally and professionally when you hit the goal, what you will uh, accomplish in terms of fulfillment, uh, in terms of wealth or finances, right? Get clear about that because that's going to be the motivator that, that anchors you into the goal. And then we need to look at strategy. How will we get there? What are the activities, right? So once we've determined the purpose for the goal, we can look at how to set priorities and then those priorities start to determine the actions and, and that's how we become productive. And it's the productivity, right? It's the action. Nothing changes without action. We can't just think our way to the goal. We have to get into activity and then we have to know that those activities are gonna produce high level results. So we want to work smarter rather than harder. So let's take some time today to reevaluate. If I can support you in any way, use the Facebook page, put out some thoughts and questions there, reach out to me directly. Um, I'm here to help in any way I can. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be your coach here every, every Monday morning. Um, and, and, you know, I, I love that each week, I get feedback from you about what these conversations mean to you and your business. So thank you for that. I need the encouragement and the feedback too. So I love hearing that. So please use our Facebook page as your support system, share thoughts and ideas with each other. And if you find this to be a powerful start to your week, as I have intended it to be, if you find that this is really a, a helpful place for you to hang out, then share this with your friends, continue to grow the community. Um, I'm excited to tell you that we're going to be uh, creating a podcast around Monday Morning Mojo. So that's going to be something that we'll be dropping in the next few weeks. So we're going to continue to come up with great content in different formats so that everyone can really access this information and use what, what resonates with them uh, to make an impact in their own lives. So again, thank you for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful, powerful week. Um, it's always a pleasure and I will see you back here next week. Thanks everybody.